Say what you will about Has Been Hotel, but it don't fuck around. The internet is no stranger to indie projects that promised they'd make a game or a movie or a TV quality animated pilot if enough people just believed in them monetarily. You've heard it all before. The creators write themselves a check and run off with everyone's money, after months or even years of stringing us along with tiny morsels of content like one second walk cycles and truly, truly unsettling character turnarounds. But Vivian Medrano and the Spindle Horse crew delivered the goods. They released a half hour pilot on October 28th, 2019, and at the time of this recording, they have a dick destroying 52 million views. As I said before, Has Been Hotel, don't fuck around. With only one episode of animated content, it has fan art, fan animations, boatloads of merch, and most impressive of all, a development deal with A24, the studio that brought us modern classics like Hereditary, Uncut Gems, and The Lighthouse. But because animation is hard and people who do it for a living deserve more credit and respect, it'll probably be a while before we get more Has Been Hotel. Which means we have entered a new age of rampant online speculation. Fanfic, theories, questions, cartoon avatars. You know what? No, fuck it. We'll do it live. I think the real question is, who, in this colorful cast of characters, is the protagonist of Has Been Hotel? One take, baby. All signs point to Charlie. She's got the songs, she's got the screen time, she's got top billing on the poster. She's clearly the star of the show. And by that I mean, she's literally star. But what about Angel Dust, the sexy spider that sat down beside her? Could it be that he's actually a better candidate for protagonist than the Princess of Hell? Well, I think yes. Here's the official dire gentleman take on why Hell's most lascivious spider would be an ideal protagonist for indie animation's most inspiring success story. Everyone wants some of me, and I got the creepy fan that is to prove it. Part 1. Themes. What is Has Been Hotel even about? The basic premise is that the Princess of Hell has built a rehab clinic for lost souls as a humane way to solve overpopulation. The alternative being the annual risk of being dismembered by holy execution squads from way upstairs. But at its core, Has Been Hotel is a show about redemption, and specifically the central question, can a sinner truly be redeemed? Themes can be a stickier subject than web fluid, so let's look at screenwriter Jeff Schechter's definition for how theme works in a story. In his book, My Story Can Beat Up Your Story, Schechter states, Protagonists ask questions, and antagonists make arguments. Therefore, when the question is, can a sinner be redeemed, characters like the radio demon argue, hell no. So who's asking the question? Charlie is as positive that sinners can be redeemed as Alistair is that the task is hopeless. The character sitting in the middle is none other than Angel Dust. While Angel Dust is open enough to the idea of redemption to agree to Charlie's scheme, even if it's mainly under the pretense of getting a free room, it's clear that he's skeptical about the whole deal too. As Schechter says, it's not that your protagonist doesn't start off having an opinion, but it generally lacks certainty and conviction. That is Angel Dust to a T, and the T stands for theme. He's a character who needs redemption, but isn't sure he'll get it or even deserves it. We see moments where he considers his own redemption, like the post credit sequence of the Attic music video, but really, there's no telling where his story will end. Angel is an embodiment of the central question of Has Been Hotel, can a sinner be redeemed? The late great Blake Snyder said that the protagonist is the one who carries the theme, and Angel carries this theme a lot better than Charlie, by virtue of the fact that he allows the audience to experience the process of redemption from within, rather than from the outside. Much like us, Angel isn't sure if sinners can be redeemed, and like any good protagonist, we get to make these discoveries along with him. This approach is present in some of the most iconic television shows of recent history. Take for example, Breaking Bad. The protagonist, Walter White, goes from an underpaid chemistry teacher to a ruthless meth kingpin to support his family. The central question is, does power bring out the worst in people? And Walter's character arc gives us that answer. Now imagine if the protagonist of Breaking Bad was instead Hank Schrader. Walt's brother-in-law, a devoted DAA agent, and probably the closest thing the show has to a moral core, despite being kind of a pig-headed asshole sometimes. Hank already knows that drug lords are often made monsters by their power. His opinions on the matter are settled from the outset. There's no question left to answer. 
Much how Charlie just knows she'll be able to redeem sinners with enough work, no question about it. Hank and Charlie are both making arguments instead of asking questions. Another example, more specific to the theme of redemption, is a SpongeBob SquarePants episode called Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 3, wherein SpongeBob and Patrick accidentally release the supervillain Man Ray, whose untold evil is kept in check by a tickle belt. It's a belt that tickles him when he does evil things. You know, we've all been there. Point is, Spongebob and Patrick make a deal with Man Ray. They'll let him go, but only if he changes his evil ways and redeems himself. The central question of the episode is, can a person sincerely change through negative reinforcement? Man Ray's arc poses the question, while Spongebob and Patrick are positioned as antagonists because they are making the arguments. As we watch Man Ray try and fail to become a better person, the effort finally becomes sincere, and then we're rooting for him all the way to his eventual redemption. By making Angel Dust the protagonist of the show, Hasbin Hotel could take the same approach to Breaking Bad and SpongeBob SquarePants, giving the audience a main character who can engage with the themes on their level, and ultimately learns with them whether Charlie's philosophy on redemption is correct, or if Alistair and the other demonic skeptics were right the whole time. Wow! That was shit. Part 2. Chemistry. Character dynamics are often at the heart of any engaging show, and as a result, the protagonist is typically the character with the greatest number of interesting relationships. In the has -been Hotel pilot, we see Charlie meaningfully interact with four characters, Vaggie, Katie Killjoy, Angel Dust, and Alistair. Unless we count the 80 billion randos who are watching her Tom Cruise moment, that's barely anyone. The fact that Angel Dust has his own music video and an official prequel comic has provided a glimpse at the relationships he'll have with the rest of the cast. And to be honest, they're far more interesting than anything we've seen from Charlie thus far. First off, Vaggie, Charlie's girlfriend, in the more sensible, grounded half of the Happy Hotel project. It's no secret that Vaggie fucking hates Angel, and like, I get it, he's kind of a dick, he'd probably even say it himself. I'm a dick. But even though there's tension in their dynamic, this is the opposite of a writing problem. Boiling hot take, conflict is the heart of great storytelling. The verbal sparring between Angel and Vaggie feels believable based on their contrasting personalities, and also leaves room for their relationship to grow over time. Seeing these two soften to each other and become friends, or at least begrudging allies, would be something for the audience to get invested in. In a show where Angel Dust is allowed to become the main focus, a grounded character like Vaggie would also make a great foil for some of his weird hijinks as he develops throughout the show. We always fight over something dumb. We're constantly oh, I fighting just, over I just something. spilled coffee on the fucking sofa. Again. See, okay. I mean, we're not fighting over something dumb. He's dumb and we're fighting. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. That's that's how it is. I, I'm fucking stupid. I always make these dumb mistakes and she always gets on my ass about it. Okay, well, I, it's not my it. fault I'm fucking clumsy. Okay, okay, you don't have to admit it. That kind of makes me feel bad. Good. You should feel bad. Oh, okay, really you know hard. what? I feel less bad. We're fighting You're too again. harsh on me. Next up is Alistair the Radio Demon. These two don't really talk much in the pilot, apart from that one time. And what can you do, my effeminate fellow? I can suck your dick. Ha! No. But Alistair and Angel Dust are two characters who'd really benefit from sharing more screen time, which would be all but guaranteed if Angel was the protagonist. This is because Angel Dust and Alistair have a classic character dynamic. The Odd Couple. While Angel's crass, full of sass and all about ass, Alistair's classy mask hides the fact that he's a snake in the grass. Seeing two characters with such polarized personalities bounce off of each other is a perfect recipe for entertainment. And if you don't believe me, just check out some of the clips from the Honeycast, where the natural comedic chemistry between Angel's VA, Michael Kovach, and Alistair's VA, Edward Bosco, are on full display. Angel, are you in there? Yeah, I'm all busy. Just back off. I just needed to- Oh dear goodness gracious in heaven, what is that? It's my dick. What did you expect? I oh, told you not to come in here. Why does it look- Oh my goodness gracious. I told you not to come away. in here. Do you want to come a little away. closer? Do you want to come a little uh, closer? Well, clearly the better character is Alistair. I mean, he's creepy. And do you see all the fangirls for this motherfucker? <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to insist that it's Angel. I mean, he's willing to suck his way to the top. Can Angel flirt with Alistair, please? Oh, Alistair. Um. <clears throat> What's up, uh, you sexy little bitch? I, I, I'm going to ask you to respect the five-foot uh, five rule. 
That's hey, it. Hey, come to daddy. Fat nuggets, come back. Come back to daddy. Come on. No, 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 no. Angel. Fat nuggets. Angel. Fat nuggets. Stop. No, my bacon. Yeah, fat nuggets. Yeah, come here with daddy. Yeah, I'll never hurt you, fat nuggets. Uh, Get back the fuck I out. I will have my revenge. If the show brings us more of that action, I'd be very satisfied. And the dynamic between Angel Dust and Alistair also works because it serves the show's theme. To restate what I said earlier, heroes ask questions, villains make arguments. Angel asks if he can be redeemed, and Alistair replies with a resounding, Fuck no. Then there's this motherfucker, Valentino. Angel's pimp, abuser, and general all-around dirtbag. His appearance in the pilot is minimal, but he looms large in both Angel's prequel comic and the Addict music video. It goes without saying that this guy is a real piece of shit. I mean, a real piece of shit. And as a powerful overlord of hell, it's clear that Angel both hates him and is terrified of him. While the main opposition to Charlie's goal, making the Happy Hotel a success, seems to be her disapproving but ultimately loving parents, Angel is opposed at every turn by this absolute monster. Another one of Blake Snyder's rules in Save the Cat is make your bad guy badder, because the whole point is for the villain to meaningfully threaten the protagonist. And boy, does Valentino threaten. Let's lighten the mood with a more fun character. Cherry Bomb, the self-described spunky powerhouse, features prominently in both the pilot and the attic music video as Angel Dust's closest friend. But all the clues in both of these pieces of has-been media point to them having a much more complex relationship than just being best buds. From the attic music video, we know that Cherry is Angel's shoulder to cry on, which is a big deal for a character who's otherwise terrified of showing vulnerability. She's a friend so devoted that she's willing to wage war on the way more powerful Valentino as revenge for hurting her friend, not paying any mind to the consequences. But that's where Cherry's problem comes in. Despite Angel does seeking rehabilitation at the Happy Hotel, Cherry is constantly tempting him to sin again. She's an enabler. But once again, this is the opposite of a writing problem. Portraying such a close friendship between a recovering addict and a walking relapse is a strong basis for narrative possibilities. If Angel does continue to get clean, will he outgrow Cherry or will Cherry grow with him? Will she become a toxic, corrupting figure? Or will she flip the switch and become a champion for Angel's development? We don't know, but either way, it's a dynamic we'd really be able to explore if Angel Dust was the central focus of the show. And finally, the main event. Charlie, the Princess of Hell herself. It's worth clarifying that this is by no means a Charlie hate video. I'm not suggesting that Charlie be removed from the show or any of that crazy bullshit. I'm just stating my case for why she's better off as a prominent side character rather than the focal point of the whole has-been series. One of the reasons she's worth keeping around is that her dynamic with Angel has the potential to be really interesting. We established earlier in the theme section why the central question of Has-Been Hotel is better served by Angel Dust than Charlie, but that doesn't mean she's not an important thematic influence. Think of it as a set of scales. Right in the middle, we have Angel Dust, our sinner. We have Alistair, the perfect pessimist, who acts as the devil on Angel's shoulder. And then Charlie, the absolute optimist, works as the angel on Angel's shoulder. Uh, this is getting a little confusing. Point is, if Angel Dust is the Pinocchio of this story, then Charlie suits the role of Jiminy Cricket. It's a dynamic as old as time. Dorothy, Glinda the Good Witch, and the Wicked Witch of the West. Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan, Kenobi, and Darth Vader. Me, my dignity, and anime. Part 3. Backstory. Writer Dean Movshevitz said that good characters hold strong opinions, and strong opinions are often shaped by a character's past. It's even better if that past is rife with conflict and tension, and so far, it seems like no character on the show has a past more fraught with conflict and tension than Angel Dust. Here's what we can put together, from a mix of the pilot, the comic, addict, and a little word of God here and there. Angel Dust was born into a mob, forcing him into a life of crime and drug addiction that eventually led him to succumbing to a fatal overdose. Upon dying, he went to hell, despite never really having had much of a choice in the kind of life he led. And somehow, that was only the beginning. It only got worse from there. Angel Dust fell into the grasp of Valentino, who forced him to perform in a million pornos and pimped him out for cash, all while abusing him and tormenting him on the side. 
Despite earning a lot of money for his absolute douchebag boss, Angel gets to keep very little, to the point that he's actually having to do sexual favors for his landlord to keep his current apartment. So, when Charlie and Vaggy curb crawl for him and offer him free room and board for his participation in their experiment, he naturally agrees, even though he's skeptical about whether redemption is truly in the cards for him. There's a hell of a lot to work with here, and this backstory accounts for a lot of Angel's current flaws, actions, and disposition. William Akers says that good characters need well-defined problems, and Angel has well-defined problems in spades. It's an annoying trope of modern YouTube commentary to say that giving a character, particularly a villain, a tragic or complex backstory is trying to justify their current actions, but this is missing the point. There's a huge difference between justifying and explaining, and having a backstory that explains why a character is the way they are can be extremely helpful when they're the main character of a serialized comedy slash drama. The writers of the show have said that Angel Dust is a character who uses sex as a shield, hiding the massive amounts of pain and insecurity his past has given him. It'd be great to really explore Angel coming to terms with his past and processing that pain. We've all had things in our own past that have hurt us, and it can often feel cathartic to see these kind of struggles play out on screen. Of course, a lot of people could say the same for Charlie. She's someone who's passionate and idealistic in a pragmatic world. Her parents don't really get her, Neither does her whole environment. Considering that the show's primary demographic is, <laughs> truthfully, 12 to 16, it's no surprise that this theme could resonate with that audience. Here's the problem. This theme for a protagonist has kind of been done over and over again to death. Let's take a look at a few examples. Brave, The Little Mermaid, Moana, Freddy Got Fingered, How to Train Your Dragon, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Ratatouille. Did I mention Freddy Got Fingered? <laughs> As far as main characters are concerned, do we really need to retread this cliched path all over again? Angel Dust just has more to work with. He's a huge lump of thematic bubblegum, and he'll give the showrunners plenty to chew on for a whole series run. Put Angel Dust in your mouth, showrunners! Put him in! Of course, there's more to a protagonist than just backstory, especially for a show like Has Been Hotel, where the world is a lot less familiar to us. A protagonist also asks as our point of view character for the show, which actually brings us to part four, relatability. Angel Dust kinda sucks, not as a character, but as a person. He's rude, he's crude, thousands have died from the bullets his guns have spewed. I mean, he's in hell, you presumably don't get down there for nothing. But in terms of actual writing and characterization, these are all good things about him. According to screenwriter Andrew W. Marlowe, what makes us flawed is what makes us human, and that's what makes characters attractive to the audience. And this much is true, just take a look at Angel Dust Rule 34 page. I mean, spend 10 minutes on fandom Twitter, and if you manage to survive that ordeal, you'll notice that the characters people are calling big moods aren't the ones who have their shit together. We root for the sinner with a heart of gold because we see ourselves in them. We're all works in progresses who are dissatisfied with ourselves in some way, and we want to believe that we can go the distance and be the people we want to be. Like Dingo Dial. Charlie, on the other hand, is not a mood. She's squeaky clean. Her biggest flaw is that she's naive, which in a setting like this means she's just unobservant. And I mean it makes sense why, and we'll get to that in a moment, but this actually brings us to one of the best uses of relatability in a story. Protagonist as a point of view character. Charlie Maine was born in hell. She's never known anything else. Moreover, she was born into royalty, meaning that she's led a life of immense privilege, hence the sheltered outlook. But even if she doesn't know the price of milk, Charlie takes as a given a lot of the things we as an audience would need to be explained. For example, Alistair's entrance in the pilot. Both Charlie and Vaggy refer to and discuss him as the radio demon free of context. For minutes, new viewers are left thrashing for anything beyond vague tonal cues, but then Angel Dust, our perfect savior, straight up asked Vaggy who exactly this radio demon guy is. And suddenly, we were a part of the conversation again. There's this incredible narrative utility in having a protagonist who knows as much and as little as the audience. Angel Dust was a human sinner who became a demon in hell after he died. He's also among the lower class of hell, and has to regularly interact with a variety of seedy clients and dangerous gangsters because of his work for Valentino. Angel Dust, in other words, sees more people and asks more questions. He's a better tour guide to the world of Has-Been Hotel than a more informed character like Charlie or Vaggy could ever be. 
Angel Dust lets us learn about the world with him and share in his reactions, and this only deepens the empathy we're likely to feel for him as a character, moment by moment. When you know as much as the protagonist, even when things are chaotic and confusing, you never really feel lost. A viewpoint character is a perfect anchor for the audience. But of course, who a character is now isn't always who they will be. In fact, in a well-written show, characters will never end the same as when they started. Which means... Part 5. Character Arc In all likelihood, Charlie is right about sinners. Don't get me wrong, there's a remote possibility that the Spindle Horse and A24 crew might surprise us. Anyone who's seen Hereditary or Uncut Gems knows that this studio isn't afraid to deck you in the schnoz when most movies or TV shows would just hand you a Kleenex. But what I'm saying here is, given that everyone in this show either doesn't believe in Charlie's pipe dream, or is at best, like Angel and Vaggy, somewhat skeptical, it's highly unlikely that the show would bring the hammer down on her and prove everyone else right. Who knows? Maybe when the show comes out, it was all about Charlie's descent into madness as the hotel fails and nobody is redeemed, and you can all clip this section of the video and call me a moron in 2023 if we're even still here because that sounds like the worst timeline of all time. But in all likelihood, Charlie is right. Her method will work, she'll be vindicated, and that's exactly why she shouldn't be the protagonist of Has Been Hotel. Schechter again says that a good protagonist starts out being wrong about something. Why? Because if they're not wrong, what do they have to learn? This is what I like to call the hiccup problem, where a main character is already correct and everyone around them needs to catch up. While you were busy living in a society, a protagonist with the hiccup problem was studying the blade. This results in a static protagonist, whose only role is to convince everyone else to study the blade as well. Or else, something something, fall of society, Joseph Campbell, look, it's all there in the Bible. But Angel Dust is anything but biblical. He's a sinner, and shouldn't a sinner be the main character of a story about redeeming sinners? Schechter's definition of protagonist also includes the one who changes most from beginning to end. Akers says that a good character has to want things very badly. In Angel's case, drugs, booze, and cheap thrills. But what they need is different from what they want, and they must get to that by the end. Snyder says that protagonists are the ones who offer the most conflict in their situation and have the longest way to go emotionally. Even Lajos Egri, the father of modern dramatic writing conventions, says that good characters are forced to change, grow, and develop because they're here to prove the core idea of the premise that the characters have set out to display. Angel Dust is a mess, but he's not a monster like Valentino or Alistair. Beneath all of that profanity is a guy who can develop friendships, share tender moments of vulnerability, and has an adorable pet pig named Fat Nuggets. Seriously, why wasn't he in the pilot? We had time for Sir fucking Pentius and not the pig? I would have set that stupid snake on fire to keep Fat Nuggets warm. You goddamn- With Angel Dust, we're looking at a character that has a high probability of ending the show differently than how he started it, and following him on that journey would likely be an excellent spine for a show about finding the good in unexpected places. There's a real chance to see if there is a rainbow inside this demon, or if it's just piles upon piles upon piles of PCP. But as anyone who loves a great story knows, the goal is only as effective as the consequences for not reaching it. If the answer to our central question is a big no, and sinners can't be redeemed, what actually happens to Charlie. Well, she'll probably be, like, upset about it, and her idealism would take a hit, but seeing as nobody really believed in her anyway, and she's bankrolling this whole thing on her rich royal parents, she doesn't really have anything at stake. If this thing goes down in flames, she looks like Hell's equivalent of Kylie Jenner ending police brutality with that one Pepsi ad. A goofy, out-of-touch, rich person trying and failing to make a difference on their own. What exactly is supposed to be compelling about that? If we were down in hell, chances are we'd probably believe the same thing as all the other demons do. Yeah, right. Miss Ivory Tower is gonna step in and solve all of our problems. Blake Snyder distilled a lot of writing truisms when he said that good protagonists need stakes. Real stakes. Primal stakes. Life, death, love, fear, sex, survival, everything you can get in a Weishni body pillow. And unlike Charlie, Angel Dust has stakes for days. You can also find angel dust in my Weishni body pillows. If sinners can't be redeemed, and he gets stuck in hell, he's forced to remain poor, in an abusive relationship with a violent pimp, while slipping ever deeper into a pit of addiction he can't crawl out of, for literal eternity. Or he may end up in the big pile of demons slaughtered by the angel exorcists every single year. If angel dust can't redeem himself and fulfill his character arc, his two fates are either double death, or an afterlife so miserable that non-existence would be the better option. 
And doesn't it make you all the more invested? Angel Dust has every reason to want to get better and escape from this horrible situation, as soon as he realizes that he's worth the effort. Real stakes means strong motivation, and strong motivation makes a compelling protagonist. This thing is life or death for Angel. It's not just some passion project. For him, it's literally heaven or hell. And like real life addiction recovery, it's likely there'll be stumbles and setbacks along the way, but even that will be a compelling part of the journey. As Pixar story artist Emma Coates says in the first rule of Pixar's 22 Rules of Storytelling, you admire a character more for trying than for their successes. Compared to watching a spoiled princess who's richer than God confirm her bias, I'd say that Angel Dust escaping from a life and afterlife full of addiction and mistreatment is the story that many of us would rather hear. Part 6, Conclusion. Currently, there are 31 minutes and 46 seconds of Has Been Hotel. There's also a 5 minute and 25 second music video, and two brief prequel comics on the website. In all likelihood, this video talking about all this is either approaching the length, equal to, or longer than the amount of canon Has Been content there is currently in existence. The reason I'm saying all of this is, we have no idea what the finished product is going to look like. Take a look at the pilots for animated shows like Steven Universe and Adventure Time. There's hints of what the show would be, but really it's an entirely different beast when studio dollars and development executives enter the mix. What we get when Spindlehorse and A24 release the show may surpass our wildest expectations. Maybe we'll love it, maybe we'll feel let down, but whatever happens, there's something amazing about an indie online project like this busting its way into the mainstream. The pilot is, uh, certainly not without its flaws. As I've said in previous videos on this channel, I think it suffers from strange pacing, overactive sound design, a little too much going on, too many things happening, characters fighting so hard for screen time amidst the chaos that even Angel Dust, who I've been praising this entire video, is neither compelling nor funny. It's almost like 99% of his characterization exists in the supplemental material. Frankly, the pilot has since become irrelevant since A24 picked up the show. I, for one, long for a day when we can all look back at the pilot and celebrate how far the show has come in the future. It still amazes me that Vivian Madrano began this journey with an animated music video for a catch -a song. That's the great thing about our online creator peers. We get a closer look at the evolution than we ever get to with big studios. Considering the incredible things Vivzi and her crew have been doing with Hell of a Boss lately, it's clear that no matter what happens with Has Been Hotel, they are already making at least one show that lives up to the hype. I'm aware that everything I've said here might have already been considered by A24 and Spindlehorse. And if it has, I would love to see their take on an Angel Dust-centric has-been hotel. If they do choose to go in a different direction, I won't take it personally. Because in either case, they'd be creating the show that they want to make. That they've earned the chance to make. And that, that's a show worth waiting for. Thank you all so much for watching. Special thanks to Henry Galley for coming up with the topic and helping me write this fucker. We're definitely going to do more Has Been Hotel and Hell of a Boss related content in the future, as well as other indie animated projects. So if you want that sweet, sweet cartoon character content, subscribe to the Dire Gentleman channel and share this content with an animation fan you know. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the future.